Hello, <coughs> so I will talk to you about our planned study because we didn't have time to start it yet. So uh, our planned study is uh, markers of consciousness before, during and after anesthesia. And we're going to use magnetic stimulation, TMS, and electroencephalography. And I'm part of the brain signaling group at the University of Oslo. So a neural correlate of consciousness is interesting because it can be used as a clinical classification tool in disorders of consciousness. It can be used as a real-time measure of anesthetic depth. And it can be used to develop and inform mechanisms, theories, and properties of consciousness. So our overall aim of this planned study is to compare promising neural correlates of consciousness directly against each other in a controlled experiment. So our procedure is basically that we're going to give four different anesthetics, and we're going to give people, send people into a sedated state and an unresponsive state. And we're going to measure EEG throughout the whole experiment. And at each stable state, at the wake state, the sedated state, and unresponsive state, we're going to measure with, we're going to stimulate with magnetic stimulation. And we're going to perform two auditory paradigms. I will go through them now, so you don't have to remember their names. The first one is the perturbational complexity index, which many of you probably have heard of by now. But the gist of it is that, that you give a brief uh, you give a series of brief magnetic pulses there, and you measure the neural response in the EEG to these pulses. And you can do this in different states, like, for example, anesthesia. And you will see a different neural response each time, and you can take that data and you can compress it and measure its compressibility. And then you will get a PCI score. And when you plot the PCI scores for different states, you see a remarkable differentiation in these states. And I don't think you need a machine learning algorithm to say which is what here. Uh, anyway, so far it shows 100% accuracy in delineating these states. And it's also based on integrated information theory. So it's one of the few measurements out there based on a theory. The other measure we're going to test is the directed transfer function. Basically, you take raw EEG data and you send it into a multivariate or regressive model and some other steps. And what you get out in the end is the causal predictive power of each channel of EEG on all the other channels, including itself. So basically, what you see is how much information can one channel predict on all the other channels. You can come to my poster if you want some more details about it. It's a bit technical and I don't have time to go through everything. Uh, so in general, you can see a qualitatively different uh, topography of these connection strengths between different states. Ketamine is interesting as an aesthetic because you have vivid dreams when you're in under. So that's why, at least some theorize, that's why it looks so much like wake state. And in a single time course for a single patient, you can see a qualitatively different uh, state of these connection strengths over time compared to when the patient is awake, over here and over here. When you compare it with the PCI, it's quite robust as well in classifying what is conscious awake and what is unconscious. The PCI is overall much better, while the DTF is close, but no cigar yet. Auditory paradigms, because we're going to use uh, deviants, so that is sound of tones or sound of names, and we're going to measure the deviance in the EEG signal to these names or to these deviant signals. And you can measure the deflection from the baseline, and you can compare that across states. And it shows quite good comparison over states with what they actually have or what they actually are, if they're unconscious or not. Uh, we've done one single case pilot of this. And uh, there's just a brief summary of the result. You can see the PCI, here is the stimulation, the magnetic stimulation, and the neural response picked up from the EEG afterwards. And you can see a qualitatively different response in the unresponsive, that is the unconscious state, and the awake state. However, our analysis does not agree with this, and basically says that this person should be uh, more conscious than this person, but there is room for improvement on the methods part. And DTF, 
uh, shows the same as I showed before, differentiation between the unresponsive state and the awake state. And down here you can see the classification algorithm probability of being it classifying as conscious or unconscious. And down here you can see the unconscious and the conscious up here. So to conclude, we aim to compare these four different methods uh, in within subject design with four different anesthetics. And we want to replicate prior findings and we want to test and develop new methods based on EG data to see if we can find new methods that are better or compromise of the existing methods. And we of course want to share our data with other labs as they become available. So these are the people that I will do the study with. I didn't find better pictures for some of them, so sorry about that. And uh, you can find me at my poster, number 31, later. <laughs>